What's up YouTube? I'm Jake, this little girl is Fiona, and welcome to season one of Sailing Life Aquatic. We are back in Puerto Rico and it's time to get started on some boat projects. I was really hoping I was going to be able to buy a boat that didn't have any projects, but silly me, that was ridiculous. I'm going to have loads of projects because I want to change it and make it mine, even if I don't have to really fix anything, um, but I still do have to fix things. So, first off on that list, engine rebuild. Uh, this motor needs a new heat exchanger bad. I can see from the other one that it's rusted, but we'll get into that. Uh, dinghy davit reinforcements. The dinghy is a double floor fiberglass dinghy with 15 horse four strokes. So it needs a whole bunch of basically strong davits to get this thing out of the water and not tear the solar panels off the back of the boat. So we're going to fix that problem. Uh, new solar panels and MPPT controllers, new autopilot head unit, new interior lighting, I'm going to put fans in every room, hatch seals, new outdoor VHF extension, window curtains, new outdoor new, 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 new air conditioner unit. So, it's a huge list and uh, let's get started. On today's project list, it's a beautiful Friday night, I can hear music at the bar, but we got work to do. So, basically what I've got hooked up here is a transfer pump and I'm going to be transferring all of the oil out of my motor via this tra oil transfer tube down here. Basically it's just connected to the bottom of the motor so it's kind of like mar marinerized. Marine, it's converted into a marine motor so you can remove oil because you can't get to the bottom of the motor otherwise to get down to the oil pan. So you just can suck all the oil out of this tube and I'm putting it into some jugs where I can dispose of it properly at one of the neighboring marinas. That actually has a place to get rid of oil. So, happy Friday, let's see how this goes. Oh. I have two beautiful jugs of oil. I'm assuming there's still quite a bit of oil in the filter or something like that, because it's supposed to be like 2.3 gallons of oil, or 2.5, I can't remember. 2.7 gallons, and this is two gallons. So there's probably some with the filter too. But that is mostly project success. Next, I have to figure out how to also get the coolant out of the motor. And that might be a little bit messier of a job because it can't really get sucked out, I don't think. It just kind of drains out. So I'll see how it goes. So sit rep. I took the top of the heat exchanger off. And I pumped out as much coolant as I could with this fun doohickey. Now I need to take off that bolt and try and get that coolant into said bottle, which may or may not happen because there are a lot of little bits and doodads in the way. So I'm hoping it's a nice good stream. Um, there's already a little bit of coolant down here underneath the motor. So worst comes to worst, I'll probably just pump it out of the engine bay later on and back into here, which isn't ideal, but it's not like it's going into the ocean. And so, and the whole engine bay is gonna get cleaned up after this is done. So odds of me spilling coolant in there, very high. All right, so as of now, I've given up on getting the coolant out of the motor because both of the both bolts are seized and they're square heads and I don't really have a good way to grab onto them without stripping them. So we're just gonna pause and my mechanic friend's coming over tomorrow. So we're gonna look at that, that, that then. So next project is the electrical panel. Down here, all the LEDs are broken or missing. So I'm gonna go through and replace a bunch of these LEDs on the board with some new ones. And these are all green for the 12 volt, 12 volt system, but I might end up swapping some of these out for different colors because I've got a whole kit here and then I can set like the interior lights to yellow or white and set my water systems to blue and stuff like that so we'll see lights have been replaced that were dead. I got some new fancy lights all the way up the side um, and all the way over here as well. I replaced all the dead ones and I might come in and swap some more of these but for now it's looking good. Let's go back to the motor. So the next day we started by pulling the heat exchanger off the boat and I am so glad we looked at this because 
it was rusting away from the inside out. If I had let this go on any further, this could have been a real problem because this is where all your exhaust gases go through and also your cooling water. So it could have been blowing both of those inside the boat had this joint failed. What are we working on next, Dale, here? We're putting the rods back in the top. Yeah, we got the rods in, and the, now... The rods are already in? Yeah, the rods are all in. But actually, if you feel them, so you could actually, if, you, if it moves side to side, it's not in the right spot. Like, literally, see how it's moving? Yeah. Once you get it in there... Once you get it in there... It doesn't look like that. Got it. And that's, like, extremely important. So that's where all the rocker arms are grabbing and now we're going to check clearance on rocker arms now i got to get that i actually have to get them all to make sure they're all in the place first before i do that got it and then i gotta tighten everything down yep and once it's in once it's tightened down then i can go in and i can start checking gotcha we'll adjust from there cool all right so d255 has been upgraded to a d275 by no means other than changing the sticker but this is the part that was awful on the old motor, but it is now new on this one. Come on, focus you. We have an actual mating flange. Next on the list, new exhaust tubing down the road, but for now, running motor. All right. Update. Motor is running. New mixing elbow here is installed. We have a drip right here. Gonna fix the impeller. Finish putting the uh, belt cover gasket on. Start it back up. Add some silicone adhesive here, some RTV. Get rid of that little drip. And hopefully that's the last thing with the motor for a long time. There she is, running beautifully. We've also added a Raycor fuel filter, a Vetus see-through water strainer. She is just idling perfectly. All the oil has been changed, all new injectors, all the fuel pump was rebuilt. There's all the new injectors. That is a beautiful sounding motor and a beautiful engine bay. So today, it is finished up by a long busy day in my office here on the boat. And now, it's time to start working on the first window seal. Oh joy. I just removed the old window seal and the old stripping that used to go around it. I didn't think it was the same because like the strip that was inside here didn't peel off right away with the old one. Um, and then there's all this old sealant that I gotta pull off next, so. That's what's on the list though. Remove this, and I'm gonna put in the first one and see how it goes before I take off any of the other ones. Cause they all still kinda work, but they're like kinda separating and they're going bad. Um, but one at a time. Make sure it works well, and then once I've got a good process down, I'll do the rest of them. Okay, so I believe I have completely removed all. 99% minus some residue of all the silicone around the window. So, all of the silicone residue, I used a plastic scraper and I went in here and removed it all. It's focus camera. From this gap that goes all the way around the whole window, that was a humongous pain. I guess it only took me like probably 30 minutes, but anyways, you're not supposed to use any uh, cleaning residues or anything because you'll actually remove the anodizing on the aluminum So just go over it with a plastic scraper and get off as much as you can um, You could maybe use some metal pieces, but again, you'll probably remove some of the anodizing So up to you and how destructive you really want to be about your windows. Um, I got to go back and remove just a little bit of uh, Looks like where the seal stuck to this, but anyways for now I'm gonna go through and test fit camera don't fall. So for now, I'm going to go through and test fit the new seal all the way around. Well, that's going unbelievably off. 
awful. I I can't get the window to close. Like the seal's on there and it looks perfect now, which took a long time as is, but I can't get all the seals to close, so who knows? Maybe it's just that it's brand new, but it uh it definitely doesn't want to squish down. It is very, very on there. So today begins a new day, another project. Um, it's not going to be a new project as I've already completed one of these, but as you can see, these window seals have just absolutely had it. And this one likes to leak and it is ruining the wood. So it's time to fix it. And even it's drained down here. It's gotten this wet. The stuff has gotten wet. It's no good. Anyways, these windows are sealed in. There's a little rim here where the seal actually sticks into and it's cocked in there. So I have to remove this old seal. And then I have picked up some stuff from 3M. It's their 4000 fast gear for UV. It's supposed to be good for port lights and everything else. That's what I'm gonna go in and fill it with afterwards. But I made a huge mistake on my other window and I actually let some of it cure on the window and I had to scrape it off and that sucked. And it actually didn't seal quite right. So I had to scrape it off and then Vaseline all this stuff and then it's sealing, now it's sealing well, but that was a huge mistake. So if you're working with the poor lights, make sure you clean off the seal so there's no sealant on the seal when you're done working. Um, but that window's done. Maybe I'll replace the glass eventually anyways because that one's getting pretty bad, but for now, we're just gonna let it ride. On the bright side, the seal's coming off. Mmm, I should have stopped talking. See, but as you can tell, this is the part that used to be connected to the old seal. Oh man. And it, like, this just wasn't sealing at all or doing anything. This is actually coming out. Better than expected though. At least this isn't a boat from the 80s, it's 2006. Which, like, why is this a problem already? Because I know lots of other boats, but it is what it is. It's coming out, hopefully in one piece, and then I just have a whole bunch of scraping and cleaning to do. The worst is putting the new one back in though, because they just don't fit well. I mean, they fit as intended, but they're so new that I can barely shut the window. <laughs> what a mess. So I've gotten most of the old black seal off. And now there's a whole bunch of basically this rubber caulking or whatever it is. This is gray stuff. And in order to get that out and not really damage the window, I've basically just been pushing this in and running my plastic scraper along and it'll grab and it'll push that caulking out. And what this won't do is actually damage the anodizing here on the plastic because you can't use like acetone. So I'm pretty sure acetone will damage this. Um, the plastic, I can use a little bit of rubbing alcohol. So when I'm done, I'm gonna go through and clean everything with rubbing alcohol, but for now, plastic scraper it is. Next is new seal. So pretty much you're supposed to take these and test fit them prior to gluing them in. So I'm gonna go around, make sure everything fits, make sure I've gotten out all the old stuff. Then pull it back out and uh, seal it in. And we'll see if I get to one or two of these today. I've got a second one to do over the nav station because that one also looks like it's cracked. So there's a wandering dog. Fiona. Fiona. Nope, she's had enough of us. All right. Oh, wait. Fiona. All right. So. The rest of this window seal install was not filmed because I used 3M4000, which was an awful idea because it is a fast curing adhesive and I did not have enough time to get the seal all the way pressed in before the adhesive started to cure. And so I had to actually remove the seal and then go buy a different adhesive. On the first window, I used clear silicone and that worked pretty well, but I didn't love the results of how it was shaping up to be and how it hardened. It was functionally good. Um, I don't like the look of it because you can see a little bit of the clear silicone still. So on the second one, I wanted to match the color of the seal. So I actually went and bought a slow curing car windshield silicone and it's black and it matches the seal. And this worked so well because it's flexible. So it can flex with that seal and it's not gonna have any problems with the windows opening and closing on it repeatedly. And so far it has been working wonderfully. So 
if you're going to be replacing these, don't use 3M adhesives because they're way too fast curing and you're never going to get the job done. You actually have to slide the seal in all the different areas and then kind of stretch it and then let it cure over like a 24 hour period with a slow curing. Silicone is by far the way to go. So, best of luck on your window seals. And last, but very not least, and definitely not the end of my immense project list, at least for this video, is going to be the start of the dinghy davits. Fiona, what do you think? We'll be able to get the davits fixed oh, yeah. and this will be an actual working too. system. So we're adding in supports from down here up to the end, a support going across, and then we'll tie it together with some pieces here, and hopefully that will strengthen up this whole system. I'd shake it, but I don't want this tooth to drop in the ground. This whole system currently, though, is really weak. It works to hold the solar panel up, but it won't lift. Any. So basically where these lines are, we're gonna run another tube from there up, and that'll take a whole bunch of the weight from the knee. And so for all of us welding newbies, why we have this covered up with a box? So the wind doesn't blow the argon gas, which is the cover-up gas, so you don't get oxygen on your weld, so it doesn't rust. Perfect. So all right, good morning. So as you can see here, I have now officially added the reinforcements, and this <laughs> has added a ton of strength to these davits. So we added the bar going down. We tried to triangulate a little bit the centerpiece just to help it not flex so much, at least on the edges. Um, and if it does continue to flex more than I want it to, I'll probably add a second bar all the way out here, going all the way across. Um, and then these also have backing plates down below on the boat but this added so much strength so I'm not worried about loading up the big dinghy on there anymore especially at anchor we'll see about for sailing and then I've got both the solar panels this is just one of them right now I got to put the other one on there still so I think what we're gonna do is I ordered a few more mounts so I can mount to this railing and we're gonna take this bar and move it all the way back leave the forward bar where it's at and I'll turn both of these solar panels so they're gonna come off to yeah, somewhere back here but they're just gonna hang off quite a ways from the boat so that's the plan and it's uh looking good well if you made it this far thanks for watching the project montage I wasn't able to get all the projects I've been working on in there, but I was just trying to get snippets of a little bit of a uh, bunch of them. So that way if anyone has any questions about specific things I did or reasons why I was even looking at stuff or fixing things, um, let me know and I'll reach out in the comments and uh, I'll try and help you guys out or answer any questions I can. There's lots of other projects still going on, but as this is a sailing channel, I really want to get back to sailing and go out on some more adventures and get the boat ready so that way when friends come down or people want to go sailing, it's ready to go sailing, and that's what I'm looking to do next. Actor, looking good, we're in focus. All right, just one other quick note I was gonna mention. If you wanna stay up to date with real-time updates and see what's going on with little Fiona and I, I'll try to put my Instagram here. It's my first time on this whole YouTube thing, so hope it shows up right about here. Otherwise, I'm also gonna try and open a Patreon account here in the near future, so if you'd like to stay up to date with uh, myself and Fiona and see where we're at, see what kind of projects we're going on. Um, I'd love to get out and meet new people. Networking is one of my favorite things to do and just get out in this world and meet some of the most amazing people that exist. One other thing with that is if you'd actually like to pay for a Patreon account is I'd like to be able to give back by either hosting live sessions with people or having people be able to reach out and specifically ask me any of their questions about boating, this lifestyle, um, you know, kind of some one-on-one -on -one mentorship. If anyone has any interest in that, it's something I would love to be able to help people with and get more people out in this community. So more on that to come, hopefully a link soon. Stay tuned and uh, more episodes on the way. I'm gonna hopefully try and launch one about every week to begin with, but working full-time, it's still hard to do. So stay tuned and 
we'll go from there. Say bye, Fifi.